Hey, so welcome back to Flat World. In today's episode, I hope to get a uh, mob farm built because that's going to be a key to the future of this episode. So a lot of the time spent is going to be gathering resources and I'm going to cut a lot of that out. Um, you'll see me jump up to the cobblestone generator here and there, but that's not going to be the focus of this episode is running a cobble generator. So in order to meet this, um, we need at least 10 stacks of um, cobblestone, probably more like 15 or 20 stacks of blocks in total. We're going to mix wood and um, cobblestone on the end, so there's going to be a lot of wood chopping, but in addition, wood is the only source of charcoal for torches. So there's going to be smelted wood and making torches and lighting and all of that sort of stuff in this episode. Um, and you can see this room is a little bit tiny. We're not going to expand that this episode. Maybe next episode we'll get into expanding out. But first, I am so sick of slime. And it's not just in this world. The slime are just everywhere. So we're going to start by putting a fence around everything just to prevent them from you know, being right up in my face. This is a temporary solution. Longer term, we've got to get rid of all the slime on the on the world because they just jump around and knock me about. So the goal of this fence is to surround the area that I'm most frequently in, which is the area where my trees are growing and immediately around my little base hole thingy and my cobble generator. In addition to that, I'm gonna do a little bit more um, work, but to start with, I'm not gonna put in gates. Gates you have to open and close. I'm gonna put these carpets down just on top of the wall. If you haven't used this trick, it's really nice. Animals don't use it. They can't um, jump on it, but you can jump right on the carpet and walk right over. Also, it's time to start filling in some of these creeper holes now that we won't end up with creepers sneaking behind us and blowing us up. So, you know, make it a little bit nice and neat around here. If you weren't aware, this is how you get another uh, water source on a sky block or a flat world. You got some bone meal, you hit the, uh, you make a hole that is two deep on one side and one on the other, and then you bone meal. If you get a coral fan or seagrass, it makes a water source there. So you can get your infinite water source from one um, thing and a and a bucket of uh, a bone meal. So like bone meal and water bucket, you got yourself an infinite water source. Uh, I also happened to get a bee. I didn't know that was possible. Maybe it's a bug or whatever, but I, I got a bee this episode, which as soon as I get glass bottles or shears, which... It's going to be a project to get shears. Uh, we can start making honeycomb or honey bottles. So on, now we're going to make an area for a little crop farm. I got a carrot in the starter chest and I also have melon seeds. And since I'm going to be spending a lot of time grinding resources, you know, just chopping away at the cobble generator, this is a, you know, reasonable first set of farms to be putting together. I will say I'm going to not show you all the farm progress and at the end of the episode I'll jump back into how many crops had grown since, you know, starting the uh, the crop farm just, you know, here. Anyway, crops you don't want to jump onto, so I'm going to put an actual fence gate there. That means that I won't trample it, and then I'll move this piece of carpet over to the opposite side. With the carpet over on the opposite side, now I can get out. Um, in the long term, I want to put my mob farm that way, um, so it's away from the crop farm, but it's also uh, pretty close to my base. Um, here, you know, make up a hoe. I'm gonna if you get a bucket of water. Uh, rather than showing you hoe everything, me hoe everything, I'll just you know kind of cut to our our planting so I don't want to just start with one carrot so in one melon I don't want to wait for the melon to grow so I'm gonna 
actually bone meal up a couple of carrots. Don't want to use up all my bone meal because I would like to keep some in case I need it for making water or whatever else. I got about, I don't know, eight to ten carrots planted now. So this will give you an idea how long I spend to gathering resources um, and getting my farm ready. So now we have quite a few blocks together. Uh, we're gonna need even more than this and we actually have to light up the area in order for us to get a reasonable um, f mob farm out, even just a reasonable basic mob farm. So next step, pack up the torches and go lighting. And I'm gonna just light a pretty big area. Um, I didn't actually, you know, make these even or whatever, but as you can see, it needs some lighting. The uh, skeletons are getting, you know, trapped down here and we don't want to have, you know, a pile of mobs every time we leave our base. So let's get the lighting done and I'm going to cut through most of this, but basically with the new lighting engine, lighting became a lot easier. You just kind of need to go 12 or 15 blocks apart and then space them out kind of on the diagonal. Or you can just go torch spam, which is kind of what I ended up doing. So we're at 62 items. One of the things that's going to happen is I found a bug in my tool. Uh, it kind of is going to lose track at one point because I had to reset things and then I went through and just broke all my chests and cycled everything through my inventory and then in the future you're gonna see an adjustment again and that's because I went through and double checked all my math and had to fix all of the blocks so this is a new tool I haven't released it yet for everybody to use but this uh, block counting tool is kind of kind of in beta, so I'm, there may be bugs left that I have to work out and reset. But generally, I'm going to be honest, none of that stuff comes from creative. I just go through and uh, make sure that I get the right number of blocks by breaking uh, my chests and recrafting the things that I remember crafting. So this is the start of my mob farm. So I dig a long, too high tunnel underground. This is going to be my killing chamber. This little window I'm cutting right now, that was for... Uh, where I chop through to get the mobs and then this big pit I'm digging is gonna be a drowning pit and the reason I'm doing a drowning pit if you're not aware is when a, when a zombie converts to a drown he drops his armor and you can smelt that armor and turn it into uh, nuggets and that's really my only way to get gold at this stage and it's also the most like effective way for me to get iron at this stage too so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sort out how far I need to make this channel by taking a water bucket and placing it. I'm going to use water streams for item collection, I guess. Um, I don't have any hoppers. Nothing's going to be automated. This is just going to be a really basic mob farm. So now I'm going to extend my uh, hole out and break my shovel, uh, but extend my hole out so that I have the largest amount of space to drown mobs that I can. This is mainly to make my uh, f mob farm just a little bit larger without having to make complex water streams. So now we're going to use trapdoors because mobs, as you know, they don't see trapdoors when they're open as like uh, a difference than when they're closed. So they'll just walk right off of those because they think they're full blocks. So now I marked out my middle, dug down, and I'm doing a lot of thinking because I didn't design this mob farm in creative. I just kind of started building and talking about it with people in Discord as I was building and hoping that, I, that it made sense when I was done. Uh, I had done on Twitch a little bit of a flat world in the past, and we did a play test before we started that series, and I had an idea of what I wanted to do. So when I place these trapdoors on the bottom, I realized I can't tra uh, then chop the little babies. So I moved them to the top side. Uh, this is to prevent the water from coming through. You, these could also be buttons, I realized after, but uh, trapdoors 
are what I put down to start with. So <laughs> that's what it's going to be. <laughs> um, if you hear Discord pings, that's I thought I had the channels isolated. I apologize for that. It's uh, was a mistake in my uh, recording. I can't take it out now. So now we're going to place in the water streams, but as you can see, they don't spread properly. So if you had to place blocks underneath, um, I thought, oh, you know, slime blocks are easy to get and they're easy to, to break. So they're a great thing to use. And I know I have a bunch of slime in my storage. So after I kill a couple of these guys, let's go back to the storage system and pick up all those slime balls. So remember last episode I said I might have had it on easy. It turns out I did. That was a mistake. And I moved to hard and got murdered by a slime. That yeah, it's unfortunate. Got killed, but that's my first death in the world. So I'm pretty happy that I made it that long without dying. So now this is me figuring out how to get the water streams to work right. Um, and then also water co uh, item collection is going to be, I just go into that little two by two hole and pick up the items through the blocks. And this ended up not working the way I wanted to. So I had to basically fill in the whole area and then my, um, my water streams would work correctly. And I needed to block update because it thought that it wasn't um, it wasn't ready. So block update, break all the things out, replace all the water, and now we can start actually building the spawning area for the mob farm. So we're gonna go up one block so that the mobs can't swim out when they're and go back onto land. We had a problem in one at one point on the previous version where the creepers would swim out and then they'd blow up on the surface. So this uh, arrangement where you have a one block air means that the monsters can't get out. And now we're going to go up and give ourselves another window. And this window is going to be a way for us to attract mobs with a bow and arrow, but also going to give us the ability to uh, block the mobs from shooting at us or whatever using trap doors. So that is going to be basically how we work this mob farm. We're going to attract the mobs across the trap doors. They're going to fall in the water. They're going to drown. We'll go underneath and then we will uh, chop and chop to get them to, you know, become uh, drops. The other thing is I wanted to make this so that in the future I could place the um, lock the trap doors down and trap monsters because I, I need to get some zombie villagers. I need to get a witch. The witch is going to be able to drop a splash potion of weakness every once in a while. And that's how I'm going to be able to cure my villagers before I get to the nether if I happen to get enough gold. So I'm just planning ahead a little bit. I think I need the uh, gold at this point. Um, and I think I need the zombie villager capture method. So we'll see if that actually gets used later in the series. So now this is where the second floor, this is just going to be a two floor mob farm. Um, it's not nothing too fancy blocks for mobs to spawn on trap doors for them to walk across and um, an area for me to kill them in. This, uh, during this build, I placed all the trapdoors and realized, you know what, I don't need that many and trapdoors are expensive. So I went through and I left two block gaps uh, just so that my uh, trapdoor usage would be lessened. And then I made it nice and neat so that people with, you know, OCD don't have to uh, freak out that I was off by one block. Now we have both of the traps done, but I need a way to get up top because this is the way that this works is it uses the player to attract. Remember, I don't have access to tridents, so trident killers will never be a thing on this world. So I need to go through, pull the mobs in to a spot where I can kill them because the iron nuggets that zombies drop are really, really important uh, as it's the same as uh, chopping or smelting nine sets of armor, which means it's like a huge win whenever you get one. And so I do really want player kills. And I 
Well, I mean, I could use campfires, but they're pretty expensive. That's the only way I have to actually kill mobs other than player kills at this point. So now, well, we've got the mob killing area and whatever built out. We can place blocks for the mob spawning area. This is going to be eight blocks deep and about halfway through placing these blocks I realized these could all be slabs. I don't need to do anything with full blocks so I started doing placing slabs instead. But yeah just wall in the area and make a big dark room. The top does need to be solid blocks and I was thinking about whether or not it was more efficient to do a fully walled in area or not and I counted out the blocks. For this small of a farm it's absolutely more efficient to do a walled in area. Uh, you'll notice that the colors change during these segments because I brightened these up so that the YouTube video would look better. Um, I also lowered this floor off camera just because I didn't want to uh, have to look down to chop. And now we're gonna seal in this uh, little cave area so we can actually get monsters to spawn. And we'll go back and dig a tunnel back. 24 blocks. 24 blocks is the monster spawning minimum distance. So I walked away for a few seconds, came back, and there's monsters in the drowning pit. If the mon if the zombie has uh, armor on, I let him turn into a drown. If he does not have armor on, I kill him because there's a chance that he drops an iron ingot. And we need, uh, what is it, seven iron ingots to get to our cauldron so we can get to our lava so we can get to the end, or so we can get to the nether and then eventually get to the end. So this is basically the mob farm. You crawl up these ladders and you can attract the mobs down, they'll fall into the into the water gutter, and then you go into those little notches on each end to attract the or to get the items through the corner. That's about it. Uh, you're safe in here. If a creeper blows up, he's in the water, he's trapped, he cannot break any blocks. If a uh, zombie's in there, you're gonna get his armor or whatever you need. Now I'm going to need something to do while I actually wait for the mob farm to do its thing. I've got chopping trees, I've got breaking cobble, but I want to be able to do a little bit more. So I made myself a fishing rod and this is how many carrots have grown. I've replanted it several times. It's enough to fill up the whole farm and we got a watermelon to start doing a watermelon farm. Maybe next episode I will expand and do water farm, but that's all I really have for you today. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe if you are not already. I know a lot of you are not subscribed, and that really helps me out. Anyway, this is Hatter, and I'm out. Bye!